One of the most common applications of uh, magnetism is the use of a compass. It's uh, a very old use, and we use, uh, use that for navigation, and even there are some birds, and even from what I gather, butterflies, they use magnetism for navigation. Um, now, one interesting thing is to think about how did we figure out that birds use magnetism for navigation? And uh, the answer, the cruel answer, is that scientists who wanted to study that placed magnets uh, on the head of the, uh, some birds uh, to essentially disorient them. And that's exactly what happened. When they placed the magnets, the birds were not able to hone in to their normal um, to the nor uh, normal locations they go to during migrations. Okay, anyway, so a compass, you all know, has a small magnet that can easily rotate, and then it has a north pole and a south pole. The north pole is usually painted red, and then the south pole can be silver, blue, or whatever. Now, when we approach a magnet, for example, here we have uh, a magnet uh, being approached to this, we'll, we can figure out to what pole this red one is going to be attracted to. And of course, if it is a north pole, it's going to be attracted to a south pole. Now, if we place this on a map, that's exactly what you see. You see the north magnetic pole in a compass pointing towards the north geographic pole. Which means, somewhere here, I should have a south pole to attract the north pole of the compass. So actually what this tells us is that the north geographic pole is a south magnetic pole. Uh, it's a very kind of interesting thing. And then the other thing probably to note is the magnetic field of the Earth is, uh, does not have a static value. It's like all magnetic fields, it's due to the motion of charges. And as we know, as you, I hope you know, the core of the Earth has uh, a lot of charges within it that are not static. As the Earth spins, uh, these magnetic uh, these charges are going to be spinning as well. Now, uh, the magnetic field does not change quickly, but it changes. And how did we discover that? We discovered that through natural compasses like this compass. Okay, how to think about a natural compass? Uh, one way to do it, uh, for example, I can challenge you to do it at home. You can play with it. You can take, for example, a needle or a small pin and rub it against a permanent magnet, kind of uh, rub it back and forth several times, and you'll notice that after a while it's going to become magnetic. You'll find it attracting other non-magnetic materials. I mean, other non-magnetized materials, but ferromagnetic materials. Now, once you magnetize it, just take a cup of water and just suspend it on the top of the water. Kind of slowly put it, because the needle is not going to be too heavy. Uh, so, the, so you are going to be able to suspend it in water. But then because it is suspended in water, it's going to be able to very easily rotate. And you'll notice that it will orient along the magnetic field of the Earth. That's, that's an easy compass to make. Now, the natural compasses that we are talking about that help people figure out that the Earth magnetic field changes are going to be just small rocks like we talked about uh, earlier. You know, just any ferromagnetic material, small domains, whatever you think about. Think of volcanic eruptions. During a volcanic eruption, what's going to happen, some of these magnets are going to be floating in larva. Floating in larva meaning 
they are going to act very much like your compass. Acting like your compass, they are going to orient along the direction of the magnetic field. So what geologists found is in different layers corresponding to different eras, they find these magnets oriented differently. This ferromagnetic material deposits oriented at different orientations, giving us an indication of the changes in the magnetic field due to the Earth. Now, so this is what we said. So the magnetic, uh, I mean, the geographic North Pole is actually a magnetic South Pole. This is actually, the text here is wrong. Magnetic South Pole. And you notice here, there is a little bit offset. It's not really, they're not really at the same location. Another thing worth noting, uh, the magnetic field of the Earth, due to the Earth, you know, in general, we use 0.5 Gauss, which is 5, 10 to the minus 5 Teslas, or about, uh, one thing to note, and that's why I wanted this uh, graphic, the magnetic field on the Earth's surface is not going to be constant throughout. It's going to depend on the composition of the Earth nearby, what's... Uh, what's below that particular location, are there mountains, are there mineral deposits. So it's going to be a complicated thing to figure out exactly. It's not an exact value, it's not a constant value. That's what I want to say. One thing worth noting, this is a very early, a very old compass. It's actually a Chinese compass. This is magnetized and it is held what looks like a spoon. So there is a point of contact here towards the bottom making the friction very low and it's going to orient along the direction of the magnetic field of the earth.